So far, um, we've looked at acids and amines, and now we're gonna add two new functional groups that I'm gonna use orange boxes for, esters and amides. And these are closely related to acids and amines, um, so that's gonna be the connection here. So we had looked at our acids with this carbonyl with an O and amines with a nitrogen. We're gonna see that carbonyl, carbonyl being this C double bond O, show up again in both esters and amides. Um, so we had done that. We had looked at the neutralization reactions um, of acids reacting with bases. And so now we wanna introduce esters and we wanna introduce amides. So here are the um, features that you want to be able to find to identify these functional groups. So here in an ester group, I have a carbonyl with an O. So it looks a lot like an acid, but you're missing that H on the end. And then in an ester, you see again a carbonyl, but with an NH next to it. So it kind of looks like an amine, um, but it's not quite an amine because it's got this carbonyl next to it. Um, don't ever classify these as say ketones or amines. You wanna classify them as the biggest thing possible that you can see. Um, so for an ester, the way that I would write this generically would be R carbonyl O and then R prime, meaning it could be something else on the other side. Um, another way that you might see this, especially in your textbook, is R C O O R prime. All right. Um, over here for the amides, very similarly, we would have R C O O and then N, and then we could have an R prime. Our double prime there doesn't have to be a hydrogen although this is how we're gonna see it most often because that's how we see it in um, proteins and that's where we're gonna head to next so these esters um, we're gonna see in chapter 15 and these amides we're gonna see again in chapter 16 so we keep coming back to the same things here um, so when I look at an ester especially a small one like this um, I would say that it is somewhat polar um, but not quite as polar as a carboxylic acid, right? Because if I can look back to the carboxylic acids, the carboxylic acids have that OH, which enables them to participate in hydrogen bonding with each other. And an ester has some oxygens, but not that OH bond. So um, polar, but not as polar. Um, this is going to be not very reactive, although we'll see one important type of reaction. Um, so not very reactive. Also, because this doesn't have that proton to donate, I would say that it's not acidic. Um, the main place we're going to see these in chapter 15 is we're going to see that they show up in triglycerides. Triglycerides. And those are the fats that you find in um, plants and animals. Um, these are good links. And so these are going to link glycerols and fatty acids. They're going to link two parts of um, our triglycerides together. So that's a kind of quick recap on our esters. Um, in contrast, the amides um, also are somewhat polar, especially if they have this NH here, but not as polar as, say, an amine like we saw up here, which has the NH2. So polar, but less than my amines. Um, also not very reactive. Um, in addition to that, just like we saw that these esters are not acidic, um, I would say that my amines are also not basic. And so if you remember, we have this lone pair on the nitrogen and it's ready to normally accept protons like we saw up here. Um, here, that lone pair ends up kind of shared within this whole box, so shared somewhat with the carbon and the oxygen. And so it's not as available to accept protons um, from other substances. So therefore, even though it has a nitrogen in it, this is an exception to that nitrogen as a base. This is not basic. Um, and then we'll see it in chapter 16. Um, we're going to see this in proteins. And in proteins, this is going to be the link between amino acids. Um, so this is how we link our amino acids together is with amides. So with both of these, you want to be able to spot them. Um, we'll see in a minute how they're formed, and then most importantly, we're going to want to break them because we want to break down our triglycerides and we want to break down our proteins. So on to the next page here, um, we have, first of all, a glimpse of how we synthesize these. And you don't have to know this, it's just so you can see it, then we're going to do the opposite reaction. So to make these um, substances, we take an acid, um, we react it with an alcohol, and then we form, if you can see here, my ester. And then over here, I take an acid and react it with an amine, 
and I form, as you can see here, my amide. So that's what we call um, synthesis of these esters and these amides, um, or you can say amide, um, either way, but that's how I would synthesize them, and then in our next video we will see how to hydrolyze them or break them.